Hello and welcome to my seat by the fire. Today I'm going to demonstrate two stitches for you. I'm going to demonstrate a split stitch which is an outline stitch or a line stitch and a lazy daisy stitch which is in the same category of stitching. Um, it creates an outline. You can use the split stitch to do fill-in work as well as I've done in the handle of the umbrella. So let's start with a split stitch. A split stitch you come up from the back of your work, you go down the length of the stitch that you want to do, and then you come up between those two points and you split your threads. So here I am coming up from the back of my work. The smaller your stitch, the more control you have over the smoothness of the line. I go down and then you come back up in the middle of that stitch. You split those threads and then you continue going down coming up in the middle and you split again the threads. The larger your stitch, the more rough your line will be, the smaller your stitch, the smoother. Now you can see here that I have drawn basically a doodle on a piece of plain broadcloth. I think for learning or how I learned was to use a no risk method, basically an old piece of sheeting. I drew a doodle and then I used the stem stitch, pardon me, the split stitch to learn to outline my doodle and to figure out what it was I was doing. And so I'm going to encourage you to do a similar thing. There are many types of tailor chalk or pens that disappear when you add heat or water. I've used those in this doodle. That stitch that I just did there is just a single stitch. But here I'm coming up from the bottom, taking a small bite or small piece of stitch, and then I come up from the bottom. When slow stitching, it's important to be relaxed and not to pull your stitches too tight. If you find them going too tight, you'd be better off to use an embroidery hoop, which will keep your stitches from you from pulling your stitches too tightly. This little patch that I'm making, I will use in a larger slow stitch project, maybe as a patch on a piece of clothing or on a bag, so it won't be wasted. In fact, doing doodling and outline work is a good way to learn how to control your needle and your threads. In the winter time, it's very easy for your hands to become rough and tight, um, and your threads, my threads at least, sometimes catch on my hands, so I always use um, hand cream before I work. Now here I'm using the split stitch to fill in the umbrella handle. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take a few stitches at different lengths so that there's not a line created by my stitching. So I'm going to create, take three different length stitches at the top of the handle. Sorry, I go off the screen there. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to split them. When you're filling in an area with the split stitch it's, or any stitch, it's important to take uneven stitches so that your eye is tricked into seeing it filled in versus a line where stitches start and stop. I do um, 
the first row when I'm filling in, I split after I have the stitches created, or the uneven line created, and then I go back and split them, as you can see me doing here. The less risk or investment you have, I think, the easier it is to learn something. I'm using one colored thread so that I don't have to worry about what color goes with what. I can just enjoy learning the stitch. And it's a fun diagram that I've created on my own. And if you go on to Pinterest, there are many um, Zen Doodle um, pictures that you can use as inspiration for yourself. Now I'll move on to the Lazy Daisy stitch, and I've made it into daisies here. You can see there is the apex of the stitch and the starting point of your stitch. A Lazy Daisy can be the daisies on either end or a chain. So you come up from the base of your at the base of your leaf, you put your yarn to the side holding it there. You bring your needle up at the apex from underneath, at the apex of the leaf, going over top of your yarn. You gently pull the yarn through until you get the loop the size you want, and then you go back down through your fabric on the catching the yarn that you looped around so you anchor it back down so that your loop does not come out. Again you come up through your fabric at the base of your petal, you move your yarn to the side, you go back down in exactly the same space, you come bring your needle up at the apex of your leaf, you loop your yarn around, you pull gently on your needle pulling the thread through you get your loop, your petal to where you want it, and then you anchor the thread down by going on the other side of your leaf, or at the top, anchoring the loop so it doesn't come undone. If you put that in the wrong spot, the leaf will just come out and pull through. If you pull your yarn too tight, you'll have more of a straight line. If you go back down too far away from the yarn that you at the stem of your leaf, your petal will be open at the bottom. So I hope this has been helpful. I would encourage you to 
go onto YouTube and to type in split stitch and lazy daisy stitch and watch people who are more expert at doing these than I am. I have made this video because subscribers have asked me to. Again, I think what's important is to create a simple and basic picture for you to embroider on. To start with outline stitches such as the split stitch or the lazy daisy stitch. Do it on a piece of fabric that you don't really care about so you're not invested in anything except learning the stitch and relaxing while you do it. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I look forward to slow stitching with you again. Leave a comment on whether you would like more of this type of video or if you prefer to watch me creating a picture on its own. Again, thank you so much and I hope you are all well. Happy stitching!